Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying your time with your family. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our Bible study for this week, but first I wanna let you know, this is going to be the last video that we're going to do online with you guys, the very last Bible study video, um, because this week we're going to start back with children's ministry and we can't wait to see you guys. So beginning Wednesday night, we'll have normal Young Disciples classes um, out in, in your normal classrooms. And then Sunday morning, we're gonna do outdoor service with the kids. So all of you can sit with your parents through worship. And then after um, worship, you will line up with your teachers and we'll take you to your spots outside where we can do Bible study together. We're gonna have some good um, activities and games and crafts and things ready for you guys. Um, so we can't wait to see you guys and get together and, and um, spend time with you again, be able to study God's word again and answer your questions and just see you in person. It's going to be great. Um, so I want to remind you guys, we're also going to have our memory verse video songs attached to this video. So be working on your verses. This is the last week you have to memorize new verses for that special prize when we get back. We already, already have our prize picked out and ready for you guys, and I can't wait to share with that, that with you. Okay, well, if you remember, um, we've been talking about the Tower of Babel. We talked about how God had commanded the people to go spread throughout the whole earth, right? And um, to begin new people groups around the world, but the people didn't want to listen to God. They wanted to stay together, and they were disobedient to God. They became very prideful, and so they decided they were going to make a name for themselves and to build a tall tower reaching up into the heavens. They were not listening to the Lord, were they? So they started building this tower and God decided to punish them by confusing their language. He confused the way that they talked um, so that they couldn't understand each other anymore. And so because of this, the people who were able to understand each other, who spoke the same languages, those people got together and they would have moved all around the world and started new people groups, which was what God told them to do in the first place, right? So they started spreading all over the world and started new um, groups of people. And so last week we talked about how um, we, we are all part of the same family. The Bible says that we all come from Adam and Eve, all people do. Um, and because of this, we need to treat each other like family. Even the ones who look different from us, who have different skin color or hair color or eye color, we are all the same family um, and we need to love others the way that Jesus loves them. Remember the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That verse means that Jesus came and he died to save the world, not just certain people. So if Jesus loves the world, we need to show love to the world too. We can do that by loving others and by sharing the gospel, sharing the truth about Jesus with them. Okay, well after all of that, we're gonna learn what happened after the Tower of Babel. We're gonna learn about a man named Job. Some of you guys know Job. Um, you may have heard his story before. The book of Job is one of the oldest parts of the Bible. So this happened a very, very long time ago. So we're gonna start out by reading Job chapter one, verses one through three. It says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters, so he had many children. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, and 500 female donkeys and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. That was a lot of verses I just read. Um, but we can see here that Job was very wealthy. God had given him many blessings, many wonderful things. He had a lot of animals, a lot of children. Um, it says that he was a godly man. He loved God. He walked upright, which means he lived in a way that was honoring to God. Um, that made God happy. And it says that he was well known throughout the land. So people in the land knew who Job was. They, um, they knew he was a good man and that God had blessed him greatly. Um, God loved God, or Job loved God and he cared for his family and children. The Bible says that he blessed his children by making sacrifices for them um, for their sins. Um, so something was about to happen to Job. The Bible says that Satan came to God and he tried to tell God that Job was only faithful to him because God had given him so many blessings. 
He said, God, you take away Job's blessings and he will no longer be faithful to you. So we're going to see what it says here in Job 1 verses 11 through 12. It says, but stretch out your hand. This is Satan talking to God. He says, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So God was going to allow Satan to test Job, to take away some of his blessings so that um, they could see what was going to happen, how Job was going to react, what he would do. But God told Satan that he wouldn't allow Satan to hurt Job himself. So he could do anything to his stuff, but he wasn't allowed to touch Job to hurt him or to kill him. So Satan came along and he allowed another army to come and take away Job's oxen and donkeys. Um, it says that a fire came and burned up his sheep. It says that another army came and took away all of his camels. Um, and then a strong wind came and knocked down the house where his children were and his children that were inside the house died. And it says that all of his servants has died as well. Wow, that's a lot of bad stuff that happened to Job. All of his animals were taken away and killed. His servants were killed and his children died. This must have been a very, very sad time for Job. Can you imagine? You would probably be very sad if that were you, wouldn't you? Um, well, we're going to see how Job reacts here. We're going to see what he does. This is Job 1 verses 20 through 20, 22. This is just a little further than where we were. It says, then Job arose and tore his robe and he shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Job could have been very angry and blamed God for all the bad things that had happened to him. He understood though that God had given him all of his gifts and that God had the right to take them away. So instead of getting angry, he bowed down and the Bible says that he actually praised God. He worshiped him, even though he was hurting and very sad. Um, well, after this, Satan went back to God and he started trying to accuse Job again. And he wanted to convince God that Job would not be faithful to him. So let's see what um, Satan was going to say. This is ver or chapter two, verses five through seven. It says, this is Satan talking, but stretch out, stretch out your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand, only spare his life. So Satan is telling him, well, you took away all of Job's things, or you allowed me to take away all of Job's things. Um, but now if you touch his flesh and bones, his body, if you hurt his body, he's going to curse you. And God said uh, he was going to allow Satan to test Job again. He said, only spare his life. That means don't kill him. Don't allow him to be killed, but you can touch his body. So this verse does not mean that Satan was more powerful than God. God is all powerful and Satan only had control over the things that God allowed Satan to have control over. You guys remember this word, we talked about this a while back, this word is sovereign. That, mean that means that God controls everything. Everything in the universe is under God's control. And so God was in control of this whole situation with Job. Um, he was allowing Satan to test Job, but God knew what was going to happen. So this all might seem really unfair to Job, but we know that God is wise and just. He always does the right thing and we can trust that he knows what is best. Everything God does is right and perfect um, and he never ever makes mistakes. So after this, the Bible tells us that Job's friends came along and they told him that all these bad things must have been happening to him because he had sinned against God. Um, there are people in the world, and we even see this in the Bible sometimes, Jesus' disciples believed this, that if you were sick or if you were hurt, that you, had, um, that you were being punished because you had done something wrong. And we know sometimes God chooses to punish our sin, um, but just because someone is hurt or sick or something bad happens to them, that doesn't 
always mean that God is punishing them. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. We live in a world where there is sin and there is hurt and that just happens sometimes. Um, but we can always trust that God is in control of it um, and we can find comfort in that. After this, Job found comfort in his pain and all the things that were happening to him because he trusted God's promises for him. He trusted that the Redeemer would come, the one that God had promised to send, which was Jesus. He didn't know who Jesus was yet, but he knew that God's word says that God was going to send a Redeemer. And he says, um, Job says in the Bible that he knew that my Redeemer lives. He, um, so he found comfort that Jesus was going to come someday. So God came along and he started talking with Job. He encouraged Job to trust in him because he was in control. And we know that God is always in control and we can trust God's plans. So through all of these terrible things that were happening to Job, he continued to trust God. He loved God. Um, and so he found comfort in God's word and the promises God had made to him. So we're going to continue to see what happens next. This is um, quite a ways further in the book of Job. This is Job chapter 42, verses 12 through 13. And it says, And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than in the beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He had also seven sons and three daughters. That was how many children he had before, remember? Um, so we see that God actually doubled. He gave him twice as many animals as he had in the beginning. He had remained faithful to God through all of his testing. Um, God knew that Job walked uprightly and that he would continue to worship him. He knew what was going to happen. And so that was why he allowed Job to be tested. And it no doubt brought a lot of glory to God. It made God very happy to see that Job had continued to trust him, to trust in him and to be faithful to him. That must have made God very proud and very happy. Um, Job continued to trust God through all of his troubles in life and God blessed his faithfulness by doubling the number of his animals and his blessings. He gave him 10 more children and the Bible says that um, he lived to be very old and he lived a good, happy life. So we can trust that when we have troubles in our life that we can trust God and that God is in control, he knows what's happening and that he will work it for good even when it doesn't make sense and we can't see what's happening. We know that God sees what's going to happen. God knows everything. He is in control, he is sovereign, he knows the beginning from the end. So we can trust God too. Well, that's the end of our lesson um, here in the book of Job today. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and I look forward to seeing you guys at church soon. Lord God, thank you for this lesson from your word in the book of Job. Thank you for um, Job's faithfulness and just his, um, his love for you, God, that he walked in a way that was upright and honoring to you. I pray, Lord, that we would live our lives um, in a way that's upright and honoring to you too, and that when we have difficulties come along, we can continue to be faithful to you, that we can trust that you are in control even when things seem hard and it's very difficult. We can continue to trust you and know that you have good plans for us, Lord. Please be with these kids these week, this week. Thank you that we get to see them again soon in class and be able to study the Bible together soon. In Jesus' name, amen.